You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. My easy, luscious katsu curry and crispy chicken that you can make at home and save yourself a fortune on restaurant prices. I also prepared the Wagamama katsu curry recipe to compare. But more on that later, because we're making mine first, and in the best traditions of a Japanese katsu curry sauce, I shall start by finely chopping a medium onion, top and bottoming a couple of medium carrots before undressing and grating them, now, some box-headed fascists reckon you can eat a good meal for 30p, and while that's not true, this katsu chicken curry costs only £2 to make, and that's me telling you that, not a lying waste of oxygen, so you can trust the costings here. I'm going in heavy with the garlic, as I usually do with curries. Six cloves of garlic, which I'll sort of finely chop, and I'll have 500 millilitres of chicken stock and 150 millilitres of apple juice on standby as I fire up the pan on a medium-ish heat, and speaking of knobs, there's a generous knob of butter melting in there just waiting for this onion and carrot to be fired in and I'm going to cook these two for a few minutes now, adding a pinch of salt along the way and once they've softened and I've given you a different camera angle to try and retain your interest, I'll add the garlic in and cook for another minute-ish. We're not looking for any colour on the veggies really, so once we've taken the raw edge off the garlic by gently cooking for another minute or so, we can finally grate in a sort of, well, they always say a thumb-sized piece of ginger, don't they? But I always say, well, what if you've got big massive stranglers' thumbs? Uh, about 20 grams worth is the right amount. And speaking of strangling, I was reading an article the other day that said that younger millennials and Gen Zs are getting right into their strangling in the bedroom. Nothing to do with this recipe. I just thought I'd throw that out there, you know. I mean, if I have to know it, then you have to know it as well, I'm afraid. Anywho, I've added my 500 millilitres of chicken stock and 150 mils of apple juice now and I'm going to let that cook for a few more minutes and this is quite an important step because we want the veggies really well cooked and soft and you'll find out why in a bit so let's start adding some more seasoning with a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper but black's fine too if that's all you've got. An optional quarter of a teaspoon of chilli powder if you want a bit of heat. A tablespoon plus a teaspoon of a good quality mild curry powder. Plus a tablespoon of soy sauce. And I'm continuing to cook on a medium heat as I go until I reach a gentle rolling boil. The sauce is a little watery still and will need a little thickening. So I'll do that by adding around 100 millilitres of cold water to 40 grams of all-purpose flour. And as my curry is boiling away, I'll just throw that all in there, making sure that I get in quickly with my spoon and give it a good stir. And it will thicken pretty quickly. And after a quick taste test, you can adjust your seasonings or add a little more butter in like I did for a bit of extra richness. And we're almost done with the curry sauce element of this dish now. But not quite. The reason I was so keen on getting those veggies nice and soft earlier is because I want to blend this curry smooth and if those veggies aren't fully softened, you'll end up with a gritty texture instead of a rich, thick, luscious mouthfeel. Just don't blend the curry when it's too hot and you're good to go. And as promised, I'll now do you a bonus recipe. The official Wagamama curry sauce that is in their cookbook and online. I've linked to it below in the description. And this recipe should be great because when has a company owned by venture capitalists ever been anything other than flawless? Rather puzzlingly, there's no carrot in this recipe. It's almost as if the hoarders of global wealth are not interested in doing things conscientiously. There was a medium onion in there, a 2.5 centimetre piece of ginger, one solitary clove of garlic, two whopping tablespoons of mild curry powder, a teaspoon of turmeric, a tablespoon of all-purpose flour, it's all being cooked gently. 300 millilitres of chicken or vegetable stock was added in slowly and 100 millilitres of coconut milk was incorporated. Finishing with a tiny teaspoon of soy sauce and vaguely salt and sugar to your preference. And I was excited to try this, you know, with it being provided by a corporate entity because that's where all the good wholesome food is produced. Ah. Ugh, that's disgusting. Okay, that wasn't good, but blending improves the flavour of my katsu, so maybe it would work here too. Ugh. Oh, that's really, really, really bad. Okay, it was disgusting, but there is perhaps a caveat here. I use this mild madras curry powder in all my recipes, 
The Wagamama recipe calls for mild curry powder, so I'll give them a pass here and let you decide. Of course, katsu chicken requires fried chicken, and this is my preferred method to fry chicken, beginning with 250 to 300 grams of yogurt, which will be the base of the marinade, seasoned with a teaspoon of salt, a level teaspoon of MSG, a teaspoon of lemon pepper, a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon each of dried thyme and oregano, a teaspoon of sweet paprika powder, an optional teaspoon of chilli powder, more for flavour than heat really, and two teaspoons of garlic powder, and you need to stir that very well, don't worry if you don't have all these spices to hand. Salt, pepper and MSG are the most important ones, and you can even sub the MSG for an extra half a teaspoon of salt if you like. The marinade is good for up to 500 grams of chicken, these two chicken breasts here are around 400 grams altogether, enough for two people. I flattened them a bit and they ended up a little bit thicker than a centimetre, but don't go thinner than a centimetre, and I chose to cut them in half for easier frying before putting them in the marinade, and I'll give them a good stir in there. You could just do the traditional seasoning of the chicken, coating in flour and egg, and then breading before frying, but the yoghurt marinade will penetrate the meat with all those flavours and also tenderise the chicken a little. You want to leave this ideally for four hours, but I have been known to leave it overnight in the fridge, and the longer you leave it, the more it will take on the flavour and also soften the texture. And your goal when taking it out of the marinade should be just to make sure it has a good coating, rather than trying to use up all the yoghurt in your bowl. Panko breadcrumbs are the traditional coating for this dish, and the best coating for any fried chicken in my opinion. I was lazy here and made my own panko leaving the crusts on, but if you want to make your own proper panko, you can check out my homemade panko video below in the description. I'm going to leave them for 20 to 30 minutes before frying in a temperature of 155 Celsius, that's 310 Fahrenheit, making sure not to crowd the pan too much. And if you're frying without a basket like I am here, they have a tendency to sit at the bottom of the pan and can catch a little. I always make sure to go in after a couple of minutes and flip them once the panko is set. And if I'm feeling inclined, I'll go in after another couple of minutes and flip them again. And after around six minutes, they should be fully cooked. But as always, you should check them for an internal temperature of at least 74 degrees Celsius. And that is about 165 Fahrenheit. And now that we're sure that we've avoided the horror of Campylobacteriosis, the chicken can be sliced into strips, but not before resting. I'll leave the chicken sometimes for 20 minutes before cutting to make sure we get maximum moisture in our meat. And there is nothing left to do now but plate this beautiful fried chicken up and throw a quirky shaped bowl of rice on top. And with some clever editing, it looks like that went absolutely perfectly. It didn't, but it looks like it did. Pour the sumptuous, rich, ever so slightly sweet, but also umami Japanesey katsu curry sauce on top and watch it ooze seductively down the side of that rice until it gently kisses the chicken. No more having to remortgage the house to pump more wealth and power into the hands of multinational faceless conglomerates because you've just made katsu chicken better than any men in suits can. Absolutely delicious and I'll see you next time eh, for more faintly anti-capitalist, anti-fascist rhetoric. See you then eh. Dad.